The language of Gnosticism is art and poetry. We wrote the original fan fiction, and we continue to do so even today. I really believe that art is the language of the Gnostics because many of the things that we talk about, or we try and talk about anyway, can't be explained very well using spoken language, written language. These concepts speak to our hearts and uh, our subconscious. Those areas of consciousness don't respond to verbal language the way that our conscious mind does. I went to art school after trying a few different majors originally, and I found that I learned more about life and the world from art school than I did from anything really before or since. There's a way of looking at the world and looking at things. Your mind changes when you create. You look at the world in a different way. You're, you're literally looking differently if you're involved with the visual arts. Um, our brains do a lot of calculations behind the scenes to kind of put everything that we experience with our eyes into a context. But in doing so, it glosses over things and rewrite certain things and you don't really understand that until you look at it with an artist's eye. I think that's very similar to the Gnostic impulse. I think that once we start to understand the world through Gnostic terms, we actually begin to see those things that our brains through a process of millions of years of evolution and survival of the fittest has deemed as not exactly important to physical life. And Gnosticism isn't important to physical life, it really isn't. It's one of those things that you should, if you're having trouble paying the bills, and if you're having trouble feeding your family, you're not going to be able to spend a lot of time thinking about Gnostic things, spiritual, higher spiritual things, I suppose. And that's okay. It's a long life. There's time for all that stuff. In this drawing, I had Freemasons on the brain, I suppose. If you saw last week's vlog, you'll know why. But this is a thing that I just had in my brain. Mostly the general shape of it. um, and, And a few specific details that I wanted to try. The dots around the outside in a decreasing size in the, in the circle. Um, that was something that I just saw in my mind's eye and wanted to get down on paper. Not tremendously successfully here, but well enough that I could see what it looked like. I was trying to explain art to a friend of mine the other day, and I think very much like most other disciplines, um, it isn't about getting it right the first time. Art goes through a process of layers where you sketch something out very roughly at first and then the next layer you go over it and you get a little closer to what you want and then the next layer you go over it again and you get a little bit closer to what you want. You don't often see that in the process because when you see art most likely you're seeing the finished product but that's why I love to watch speed drawings on YouTube you get to see the choices that an artist makes as they go through and place one layer on top of another and what they change from layer to layer. And if you look closely at this particular drawing that I'm doing now, none of the lines on their own are very good. I'm doing this kind of exercise in order to practice because, you know, to to get back those skills that I have lost since college. And each one of the lines, if you look at them individually, are just wobbly and not straight and pretty terrible. But then you step back and you look at it as a whole, and it turned out okay. I'm not unhappy with the result. But I think, as in most things, you'll see that that layering process is a vital part of it. As I said, art and poetry is the language of Gnosticism and the language of esotericism in general. I want you to have some homework from this vlog. I want you to go out and create something. 
something artistic, something you think is beautiful, painting, a drawing, a poem, a piece of music, uh, a particular interesting pattern of leaves that you threw together on the floor and took a picture of. Whatever it is, make that thing and think about the impulse that it takes to create. And then think about the perfection of creation or the possibility of perfection. And understand that you never quite get there. I have never met an artist in my entire life that has ever said, this is as perfect a piece of artwork as I could possibly make. Be it a drawing, a painting, a piece of music, a poem, a a novel, anything. You can never reach that perfection. But in working with that kind of controlled imperfection, I think you kind of come to understand the process of creation in a broader sense. We exist in a world that was created, whether you believe by a literal demiurge or by forces or by science or (laughs) the Big Bang Theory or whatever it is that you believe, This world exists the way it is because of small choices made one after another and layered on top of each other. And I think that helps me, at least, to understand what what is meant by that act of creation and how, in creating something ourselves, we mirror the divine act of creation. Whether you think that was a good or a bad thing, it helps us to get a handle on what kinds of things might have been happening, what kinds of things that those beings, if you believe in them, or thinking. And it might help us to understand how to transcend this creation, maybe. At least the ancient Gnostics probably thought so. And once you create your thing, I'd love it if you shared it. Either uh, maybe put a link here in the comments of the video, or post it on the Gnostic Wisdom Network Facebook page. Just, you know, let, let us know what it was that you created. We'd certainly love to see it, and uh, we'd love to share in that act of creation with you. All right, ta for now. We'll see you next week. Three weeks in a row. That's pretty good, huh? I'm excited.